Hello, welcome back to another tutorial on Vedic Astrology. In this video, the topic is why the moon does not have any enemy. I asked the same question to my students in class and one person, one student got up and said that's because their mother has no enemies. That was indeed a, quite an original answer. So when I showed the friendship enmity table on screen, uh, which is what I'm going to show to you also right now, they asked, is there a logic behind this? Is th In this video, I'm going to explain to you what is that logic. So now we are back to the green board. And to understand this lesson, you must first know the Mulatrukona signs of each of the seven grahas. We are excluding Rahu and Ketu in this discussion. Planets are very much like human beings. Planets look at each other. Planets have friendship and enmity between themselves. They rule like human beings for a particular period of time. They keep moving. So there are a lot of similarities between planets and human beings. So, by referring to the table, you will find that, for example, Mars treats Saturn as its neutral, whereas Saturn treats Mars as its enemy. While Saturn has Moon as its enemy, the Moon treats Saturn as its neutral, whereas Venus treats Sun as its enemy and Sun also treats Venus as its enemy. The basis for all this is Mulatrikona. That's why I request you to watch my video on Mulatrikona in case you do not know about it. But even otherwise, in this uh, tutorial, I'll be covering that portion also. So, so let's put the Grahas in its Mulatrikona house. So, Sun has its Mulatrikona here and uh, Moon has it here and Mars has it here. Mercury in Kanya or Virgo and Jupiter in Sagittarius or Danush and Venus in Libra and Saturn in Kumbha. So all the Grahas except the Moon, all the other Grahas have their Mulatrikona in their own house. The Moon's own house is this Karkatakar Cancer but he has his Mulatrikona here, that's the exception. The moon cannot, will not treat any planet as its enemy because it has to go to each one of their houses. So rule number one is, note the signs which are the 4th, the 2nd, the 12th, the 5th, the 9th and the 8th from Mulatrikona. The planet who rules these houses are its friends. To remember this, you can use another method. You can always say 212, 48, and 59. 59 are trikonas. 48 four, easy to remember. And 212 is also easy to remember because that is, uh, it just rhymes. So I have picked up this idea 212, 48, and 59. The planet who rules these houses from the Mola Trikona are always that planet's friends. And the rest of it are its enemies. So obviously the first house is excluded. So the third, the sixth, the seventh, the tenth and the eleventh lords become their enemies. Now there is an exception. The third rule. The lord of its exaltation sign is also its friend. So please remember this. This might come in handy many times. The lord of its exaltation sign is also its friend. So, how does a planet become a neutral planet? That's because by one rule it becomes a friend and by another rule it becomes your, its, its enemy. In that case, you can say that it is neutral. So now let's start and now let's try answering the, the main question, the topic, why the moon has got no enemies. Now you know that the moon has its Molotrikona here in in Taurus, Rishabha. So let's try to find out about Saturn. 
Now Saturn rules the ninth and the tenth. So the ninth house, as per rule number one, Saturn becomes its friend. And rule number two tells you that Saturn is its enemy. Because it is friend and enemy, it has been considered as its neutral. If you want to know the relationship between the how the moon treats sun, you know that the sun owns the fourth house from this moon and the fourth house makes sun its friend. Mars owns the seventh house and the twelfth house from the moon's Multrakona. Because Mars rules the twelfth house from the Multrakona, it becomes its friend. But by ruling the seventh house, it becomes its enemy. Therefore, the moon considers Mars as its neutral. Take Jupiter. Many people think that Jupiter is a friend of the moon. As far as moon is concerned, Jupiter is its neutral because Jupiter owns the eighth house, which makes it its friend, but also rules the eleventh house from its Mulatrukona, which makes it its enemy. And uh, therefore, Jupiter is actually a neutral to the moon. So what about Mercury? Mercury is the lord of the second and the fifth from the moon. And, uh, you know, uh, from rule one, that uh, this makes it, makes Mercury a, a great friend. Because the lords of two and five from the Molotrukana makes it, makes that planet a friend. Now you know the true reason why the moon has got no enemies. Use this rule, whichever way, for all the planets and you will get the answers and you will get the, the logic on why or how we have created the friendship table between planets. But we haven't still had an example of the third rule where we had to use the third rule. The Lord of its exaltation sign is also its friend. So now let's get back how the moon treats Venus. So from the moon, Venus owns the sixth house. And according to rule two, Venus is now an enemy. Then Venus must have been considered as an enemy to the moon. Then why wasn't it considered like that? So that's the question that comes to your mind. So now use the third rule that the Lord of its exaltation sign is also its friend. The moon is exalted in this sign, which belongs to Venus. So therefore, moon cannot afford to be an enemy to Venus. That's the logic. So the moon now has, by one rule, Venus as its enemy, and by another rule, which is the, the rule of the, the exception, Venus becomes its friend. So the moon treats Venus as its neutral. How's the relationship between Mars and Mercury? Mercury owns the third and the sixth from the Molotrikon of Mars. And that makes Mercury the enemy of Mars. But look at it from the other side. How does Mercury look at Mars? As its enemy? No. The reason is, from Mercury, Mars owns the third and the eighth house. And the eighth house makes, it, makes Mars its friend. Whereas the third makes Mars its enemy. Therefore, by one rule, friend, and by another rule, it becomes its enemy. Therefore, Mercury treats Mars as its neutral. Use just these three rules and you can recreate the friendship table and the, enemy, the friendship and enmity table. From this discussion, you come to know something very important in the understanding of a planet. Mul, uh, mul or mul means the root. The root of a, a graha is in its mulatrakona. Most of the planets have their mulatrakona in uh, male signs, except of course the moon and Mercury. A planet in mulatrakona has to be considered superior to the planet in its own sign. So that's all for now. So let's meet again in another video tutorial.